Welcome to r slash murdered by words, where sticks and stones can break your bones, but words can commit first degree manslaughter. Honestly, climate change scares the heck out of me, and it makes me so sad to see what we're losing because of it. Maybe you should learn some actual science then, and stop listening to the criminals pushing the hashtag global warming scam. I don't know, man. I already went and got a PhD in astrophysics. Seems like more than that would be overkill at this point. And if you like that post, I highly recommend checking out r slash don't you know who I am, which has posts of people unwittingly talking to absolute world experts in whatever they're trashing. There's nothing more satisfying than being prettier than your ex-boyfriend's new girlfriend. Fact that he's not going for just looks anymore means you taught him a valuable lesson. <laughs> I feel like as far as dating warning signs go, a girl who calls herself Queen Bin Laden is pretty high up there. Being a heterosexual during hashtag Pride Month is like being a Jew back in Nazi Germany. <laughs> then a reply from Gadolf Schittler. It's true. A sympathetic gay couple have sheltered me in their attic for the last five days. The gay stopo came yesterday and interrogated my benefactors, but they didn't search the house. At least, not this time. I'm putting them in terrible danger, but I don't know what else to do. I know what happens to those who protect breeders. They know it too. How long will they be willing to risk their lives for me? I trust them. I have to. What happens when the closet police come back though? What happens when they're forced to choose between their safety and mine? I pray it doesn't come to that. A crowd was marching in the street today. I could hear them chanting, Yes, queen! Yes, queen! through the walls of my hiding place. I can't tell if it's the stomp of their thigh-high boots or my own shaking, but it feels like an earthquake. An earthquake inside my own head. My god, there's so many of them. I need to stay positive, but I can feel the spidery thread of hope slipping through my fingers. Why didn't I listen after Act? I could have left. There was still time, but I didn't listen. There's no escaping now, only hiding. Hiding and waiting for Pride Month to be over. <laughs> and this comment from Theo Andare down in the comments. I've spent about 10 minutes just wondering how amazing the gay Stapo's uniform would be. This next post is from Recovering H2O Addict and it's about the failed Dallas shooter who didn't kill anyone. Look at this freaking dork. Hey moron, you're dead and everyone is digging through your post and making fun of you. You didn't kill anybody and got domed by a security guard. It rules that you're dead. Normally, it's a bad thing when the media pays attention to mass shooters because that's what they wanted originally. <laughs> but I love that this is this guy's legacy. He's just a stupid dork. Man, dude, I got in a huge argument over at r slash vegan over this just two days ago. I don't eat meat, but I will not look at my dog and be so up my own butt about my lifestyle choice that I'd put it on her. Dogs are animals, and it's in their nature to hunt, have a prey drive, run with a pack, and eat freaking meat. Depriving them of that is abuse. Suck my dick. Yes, it is. If you say otherwise, you probably don't even own a dog and only think of these things when trying to sleep at night. And all of a sudden you're an expert, a freaking Caesar Milan of dog nutrition. You can tell any carnivore by looking at their teeth. Their teeth are made up so that they can tear apart a living creature while it's alive and struggling to get away. They tried throwing the, uh, look at hippo's teeth, they're herbivores, at me, but newsflash morons, they were proven omnivores a long time ago and are well known for cannibalizing each other. I'm vegan, but holy freak do I hate other vegans with a burning passion. You don't eat meat, cool. Couldn't have been able to tell that without that huge meaty dick in all of your mouths. 
Edit, here they come out of the woodwork. Before replying with whatever knee-jerk reaction you're having, ask yourself this. Do you have a dog? If you do, is it currently on a vegan diet? Didn't think so. Shut up. Edit 2. How dare you say that about hippos? Wah! Here's a video of hippos eating a zebra. Shut up. <laughs> Don't you love it when people post video evidence showing just how wrong they are? I'm glad when I used to skate as a kid, my parents didn't make me look like a dork by wearing some pointless helmet. Generation Snowflake strikes again. Imagine how nice you would have been without all the head injuries. Or maybe the parents of the guy in the first post didn't make him use a helmet because they were kind of hoping that he would fall and they wouldn't have to have such a stupid kid anymore. Do you accept insult, you absolute buffoon? Top definition in Urban Dictionary. Buffoon. A moron who thinks he's smarter than others but cannot spell the word buffoon. Oh no. Imagine knowing a guy that can solve all your financial problems without asking for passionate hugging. His name is Employment. That girl from the first post is just one broken condom away from showing up in an entitled parents post. Let me get this straight. You're asking me what has gotten better with the current generation, the generation that snorts condoms and eats Tide Pods as opposed to the generation that made black people use separate water fountains and fired folks for being gay. I'll take the condom trick any day. Foxes are lupine, not canine. Completely different species. The problem with putting more effort into sounding authoritative than being accurate is you reveal that you are an idiot. Canine is a layman term for all animals in the family Canidae, which includes every animal in this list plus a few more, like the bush dog and the raccoon dog. The problem with putting more effort into sounding smug than being accurate is that you reveal that you're not only an idiot, but also a jerk. Oh, and furthermore, lupine means wolf-like, not fox-like. The term you were looking for is vulpine. Foxes are both vulpine and canine, but they are distinctly not lupine. Jessica Biel is getting bashed, hated, and canceled because she doesn't believe in vaccinations. This toxic outrage behavior shouldn't be acceptable. It's disgusting. It's okay to have beliefs. Repeat, it's okay to have different beliefs. Everyone is entitled to freedom of speech by right. However, freedom of speech does not mean freedom from consequences due to exercising that freedom of speech. You say things that endanger children, people will criticize you harshly, as well they should. Also, can I point out the irony of the first poster criticizing people for exercising their right to criticize people? <laughs> Are you not aware that you're actually using the thing that you say shouldn't exist? I just stopped at the newly remodeled McDonald's in blank. Very nice job. I was looking around and noticed the flagpole was gone. When I inquired whether or not they were putting it back up, I was told no. So goodbye, blank McDonald's. My business will go elsewhere from now on, where they are not afraid to let our flag wave proudly. Stand up for America. Put our flag back and wave it proudly. To me, every business should have the American flag on display. For flip's sake, it's a flag at McDonald's. You probably asked a kid behind the counter who probably has no idea what the flip you're talking about and just said no. Or more likely, it's just a freaking McDonald's, which isn't a U.S. embassy, postal office, courthouse, etc. It doesn't need a flag outside of it. When will people in Carroll County grow the heck up and realize that your backwoods way of doing things is the reason that this country is dying, except for the oil, which even that is fading away. 
The fact that you let whether or not a flag is outside an establishment dictate what greasy and calorie loaded garbage you shove in your face is actually adorable. Grow up. Go experience something other than Carroll County. Because a bunch of 30 to 50 year olds complaining in all caps about how they won't buy a 99 cent cheeseburger just because they disrespected our right to be patriotic and fat at the same time is honestly embarrassing. Grow up and visit a place that isn't living in 1953. A while back, I heard my friend, a male, insult another dude by saying, you look like the kind of guy who wouldn't go to Walmart to buy his girlfriend a box of tampons. And I still think about that crowning insult sometimes. My dad once called another guy, someone who thinks loading the dishwasher once in a while makes him less of a man. I like your dad already. One time, my dad's boss was giving him flack for always leaving work early so he could get home and help my mom with me when I was a newborn. And his boss said, I've never changed a diaper in my life, really proudly. And my dad responded, I'd be ashamed to ever admit I was that worthless of a husband. <laughs> oh, wow. So in this next post, an anti-vaxxer called out a pro-vaxxer for being a shill for corporations. Then the pro-vaxxer responds with this. Because someone being employed by a corporation obviously invalidates their opinion. To all the anti-vaccine moms out there, keep it up. Go ahead and dress your unvaccinated children in their baby gap clothes and make sure you load them safely into their Graco car seats. Then go ahead and drive them to your Whole Foods where you buy their organic Veggie Kids baby food in your Luluman yoga pants. When you're done, make sure you load it all into your BMW SUV and drive home listening to Taylor Swift or Adam Levine feeling good about how you're sticking it to the man and leading your independent corporate free lifestyle. Maybe work out a little bit with your CrossFit personal trainer while waiting for your husband to get home from his board executive job at Comcast so he can take you out on a nice dinner at Gordon Ramsay's Hell Kitchen where the two of you can talk about how you're making such edgy choices like keeping your minds, bodies, and lives free from corporate agendas while patting each other on the back. When you get home and pay Consuela for her babysitting and then send her home with 30 bucks to her immunocompromised child that she's trying to make extra money to cover the medical bills for. If she's lucky, she's completely disinfected herself before leaving your house where your child, who was unknown to you, exposed to the measles virus on your Whole Foods trip was sleeping. If she's unlucky, she didn't realize and now her child is infected as well. So tell me, will you send flowers to her child's funeral before or after you log onto your Comcast internet account and post about your holistic life choices on your anti-vaccination message boards so you have some kind of positive affirmation of your terrible life choices and false sense of do-goodery? Also worth pointing out that this was posted on Facebook, which is one of the largest corporations on planet Earth. At this point, there's no excuse for baby boomers still in the workforce to be technologically inept anymore. It's just willful ignorance. This stuff is not flipping hard. Why is it asking for a password? Because you're logging into something, Martha. That's how it's been for the last 20 freaking years. How can I do this? Can you show me? No, Jeb, you can Google it like the rest of us. You've been an engineer and working with computers for 35 years. Why would I waste time when some 12 year old Indian kid on YouTube can walk you through it far more clearly? It requires one have exposure to the concept of Googling to understand how it works. Your generation was smart enough to create a giant hole in the ozone, but not smart enough to realize you have the near entirety of human knowledge at your disposal just by typing in a few words. Give me a break. I'm just not tech savvy. No, you just refuse to learn despite most modern software being idiot proof, stuck in your ways out of entitlement.
The worst part is, after you help out an old person, nine times out of 10, they'll give you some BS passive aggressive thank you along the lines of, Oh, I guess you young people have to know something about those phones you're always on, huh? Give me a freaking break, Greg. Maybe we're staring at them because it's less depressing to be distracted instead of coming to terms with the fact our planet is literally dying. It's not my fault your wife hasn't passionately hugged you since 2006. Go away. And another thing that just gets my blood boiling is their ability to get into their settings, completely mess things up, and then manage to develop total amnesia about how it happened. What do you mean you set your phone to Japanese on accident, Deborah? There's like 15 separate menus you have to navigate through to get there. I think it's because I got a virus. No, Arthur, it's not a virus. The only viruses here are your rampant stupidity and the deadly pathogens carried by your unvaccinated and probably ugly grandchildren. I just absolutely loathe that the people who decide if women should be executed for having abortions or not are the same people who can't figure out how to work a Blu-ray player with the instructions right in front of them. True fact. I once had <laughs> an older generation person that I know call me on the phone because there was a little red circle with a number one over their settings icon on their iPhone. And they were worried about what it meant. And I needed to walk them through the process of running an iPhone automatic update. That was r slash murdered by words. And if you enjoy my content, please hit that subscribe button and like the video as well because it really truly does help me out.